Hello, everyone. Uh, it seems like this is going to be everyone, so we're going to get started, even though we're 20 seconds early. Uh, this is packaging and application for Nix. I'm uh, Dominic de Labrera. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. Um, so just to set some expectations, the assumption of this talk is basically that you want to submit an application to Nix packages or, or submit a package for, for an application to Nix packages, and you just want to know how to get started. Um, so I'm not going to tell you like why you should be using Nix or um, any of the more advanced features like uh, flakes or overrides or um, modules or a whole uh, Nix OS system config. These are all things that are under the Nix umbrella, but they're not going to be covered here. So uh, just to disambiguate, Nix is a declarative functional programming language for system configuration and packaging software. But it is also a package manager for Linux distributions. And uh, my understanding is also on Mac OS. Um, but it's also the foundation of a Linux distro called Nix OS. So I just wanted to tease those apart because you might hear Nix referring to all of these things, but today we're just talking about writing a Nix package. Um, so first steps, if you want to get started writing a Nix package for an application, um, you can use the NixOS search tool, uh, search.nixos.org, or you can go right to the Nix packages repo, it's on GitHub. Uh, and you can find applications that have a sim similar build chain to what, whatever you're building. So if you're building something that's done with CMake, then you want to look for something that's done with CMake. Even better, if you can find something that has like a very similar set of dependencies so that you know exactly how you're pulling those in, it's just good to start with an example because um, Nix is a little bit complicated and it's just nice to have uh, something to reference. Um, so yeah, I recommend finding a similar enough package, but there is also this thing called Nix init. Um, Nix init is a nice little tool that can interactively create your initial package. It will basically prompt you with some questions about what you're creating uh, at the terminal, and then it will spit out a template for you uh, in the Nix language, and you can flesh it out from there. Um, I would also recommend consulting the Nix packages manual. Um, it's uh, a good reference for the package-related functions that are available. Uh, we'll look at a couple examples of, uh, of those in uh, the next slides. But um, but that I wouldn't recommend going that uh, going to that as a first step because it's very dry. It's just uh, an accounting of exactly what the different uh, parameters to these functions are. Um, so it's not necessarily a friendly place to get started. Um, there's also now nix.dev, which uh, has a tutorial on the basic syntax of the language and uh, describes how the package manager is designed so that if you feel like you don't understand how it's fitting into the bigger picture of things, you can just get more uh, information there. Uh, but again, I'd recommend just kind of starting first and then filling in the details of, uh, of the whole Nix ecosystem. You don't have to understand it all at once. Um, so we're just going to look at the anatomy of a basic Nix package. So this is uh, a Nix package I wrote for uh, a fairly trivial application I wrote in Python. Um, and something you might notice about it is that um, it's a function definition. So um, as I said, Nix is a functional programming language. So um, instead of just being like a list of um, descriptors of your uh, package. This is actually a function that's being uh, interpreted and or compiled at some, sta at some stage of the process. So if we look right up here at the top, um, these are uh, parameters or the argument set that's being given to the function. And then the rest of this is just what is going to result from the function. You might notice that I don't really have a name for the function in here, and that's because when you're putting an application in uh, Nix packages, uh, basically the name is derived from where it sits in the file hierarchy and the name of the folder that it's in. So, um, so it looks like an anonymous function within this file. Um, and what we're returning here is the result of the function um, is uh, an object that's created by this helper function. 
So um, in this case, we're using specifically a helper function that's provided for us for building Python applications. And we've got the rec keyword here. That means we're going to do things recursively. Uh, this is important because basically um, the argument that we're taking here for this, um, for this helper function is an argument set itself. And the argument set has a bunch of attributes. And some of those attributes might need to reference each other. So that's where the recursiveness comes in. Um, so within that argument set, we've got a few basic categories. Um, we've got these arguments up here that are just the package name and version. Then we've got a source fetcher. Uh, this one is specific for GitHub, but there are others for other Git repositories um, and even just like tarball, tarballs or zip files. Um, and you might notice that uh, it includes a cryptographic hash. This is going to be required for anything in Nix packages. Um, there's a way to put in a, a dummy hash that you'll find in some uh, of the example files um, so that you can just have it give you an error that will show you what the hash is supposed to be, and then you can fix your file later. They keep changing uh, to different methods of uh, prefetching this hash, uh, the hash rather, but that's the current one. Um, so then we've got build parameters that just describe what's going to go into the actual build process. And finally, down at the bottom, we've got some metadata that's going to go into Nix packages to describe what you've just packaged so that when people look it up, they've got that info. Um, now, it gets a little more complicated. Uh, you've got, for example, uh, this application is VCV rack. Um, it's a little bit odd in that it uses a bunch of customized dependencies. These are like libraries that might exist in Next packages already, but VCV Iraq is using some particular version of them where they've made some customizations that are going to make it incompatible with the standard version. So we do something a little uh, cumbersome, um, although I wouldn't say much cumbersome than what's upstream. Uh, so this is fetching from another source, a Bitbucket source. Um, that's uh, so that this can be statically included at compile time. And then we've got this down here that's actually an entire other derivation, it's called, basically like a package within this package that is just for um, a custom version of a library that can be linked in later. So it's going to compile this library before it ever gets to compiling the application itself. And um, because the, com uh, the complicated dependencies require all these let statements in this particular example, uh, we don't get to the actual um, package definition until way down here. These let definitions are just uh, defining some things that are going into the package when we finally uh, define that. Um, of course, the way we build things is usually imperative and not functional. Like we use uh, bash scripts and um, uh, make files I wouldn't really describe as functional. So uh, what we need to do uh, often is uh, inject a little bit of imperative scripting into the uh, function definition. And the way that Nix handles that is using hooks. So we've got a hook called prefetch in this, uh, or sorry, prepatch in this particular example. And that's just doing some basic patching. Uh, and I chose this example specifically because it shows a problem that you could run into with Nix when you're not used to it, which is like you can't just reference uh, like slash bin slash shell or slash bin slash zenity in this case. Um, you have to actually tell Nix where to find that specific executable. And in this case, it's going to be within the Nix package, gnome.zenity. Um, so you're referencing that particular package so that it's going to create links, uh, sim links, basically, to allow you to go into the specific version of uh, Zenity that you have installed on a system. Um, and you'll also notice that I use this uh, dollar sign out keyword. And that's going to reference the directory that everything's getting compiled into. Uh, then you can finally compile stuff. Uh, we're using Nix build. Um, and in this case, we're running it from within the Nix packages repo. So you're basically telling it to run in the local directory, and you tell it what uh, attribute of Nix packages you're trying to build. That's going to be the name of your package, basically. Um, and then you, uh, you're going to uh, look into the result directory. And this is actually going to be a sim link into the Nix store, where everything has been built. Uh, and it's going to be stored under a cryptographic hash. It's content addressed. So you're going to look it up there. Um, and you can install it imperatively using 
the nixenv command, installing it into your uh, local nix environment. Um, so there's a lot of stuff I didn't cover. Um, you'll want to look into how nix packages lists the particular kind of application that you're installing, for example. So um, there's a couple different ways to do that, and, and you should basically just look at an example that's close to what you're doing, and there will be basically a file where there's a whole list of things, or uh, more recently, there's a directory within the packages in Nix called by name, and uh, things are alphabetically sorted in there. So I've, I've basically covered a getting started kind of idea, and um, I'll leave it at that and start uh, looking for questions, if anyone has any. Okay. If no one has any questions, oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I can have a question. Um, I always find it really complicated, those things, and uh, the rest of the examples. Is there some kind of uh, reference where I can find all the specifics, like uh, there is a Python package, you have the Python package too, or something like that, or even those things? Is there some uh, link where I can find every single thing used in those files? Yes. Yeah, so the question is whether uh, there's a way to find references for the specific kinds of uh, helpers or, or tools I was using there, where uh, in this case I was um, referencing specific uh, aspects of the Python package uh, build process. Um, so that's where I would go to the Nix packages manual for. So that describes everything that goes into the build Python application function that includes things like, um, you know, is it a Py project uh, file or like what kind of uh, build backend are you using if it's a, a Py project? Um, in that case that I was showing, it was a poetry project. Uh, so um, there's those like build chain or, or language specific uh, things, those are all described in the Nix packages manual. Um, but then, you know, obviously there's more than Python. Uh, there's a whole uh, set of different attributes that you would supply for like a node package, for example, or um, Rust or uh, just a traditional make file. Um, you can just tell it what make targets to run, for example. Uh, so that's all in the Nix packages manual. Um, and then the Nix, uh, manual at nix.dev is more just the language itself and like more low level stuff. Um, any other questions? So the question is what's a key difference between Nix and RPM? What makes Nix special? Um, and the answer is, well, it's a couple of things. One of them is uh, customizability. I didn't go into this at all, but you can customize like every attribute that goes into a package. So if you find that there's uh, some patch that you want to apply, or um, you, know, you want to uh, bring in a particular compilation option or something like that, you can tweak these things uh, locally on your system without rewriting the package from scratch. It's, it's fairly... Uh, straightforward, but uh, another big one is um, that it's more reproducible. So the goal is that like every time you build the package for a particular architecture, it comes out to the same bytes, essentially. It's not 100% attainable because there could be some kind of um, there could be some kind of randomness within the uh, build chain somewhere that's like in the imperative part of it. But the idea is that you're defining exactly what sources you're fetching and providing hashes so that you know they're the same every time. So um, that's the goal is, is um, reproducibility. There was more that, it, uh, that you can listen to in Evan Good's talk that he did earlier in the conference um, that describes um, more about what from Nix can be applied to RPMs or other um, packages. <coughs> We're like um, a minute off time, I think. So if there's no more questions, I will put down the mic. All right, thank you. <laughs>